And I'm like, blah, 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 blah. What's good? It's your boy in the flesh, Saintly Silas, Silas X, whatever you want to call me. Listen, I'm the Soldy Man, and I'm here with a very, very, very important special interview with my guy, Moonrise. Go ahead. What's good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Moonrise. I'm a, I'm a motherfucker out of Kansas. Straight. <laughs> Straight pimp how I'm living. Okay. Kid. But yeah, it's bumfuck nowhere, Kansas. So I'm making my I'm making my own wave out here. That's awesome. Hey bro, Moonrise Moonrise is the wave in Kansas. So let's hop to it, man. Why did you start making music? I started making music because motherfuckers around me was making music, but even before that, I just been surrounded by it. Like I took choir classes when I was younger. I was, I, I've just been around music my whole life. Tech Nine started that shit. I wouldn't have gotten anywhere if it wasn't for Tech Nine and fucking Worldwide Choppers coming out. And then from there, I just fucking, I just couldn't stop. I tried downloading shit like FL and Ableton like early, early. But uh, I could I could never get the grip on it until like three ooh Jesus three four years ago, I just started crafting. I started making beats, and those beats was ass. Them beats was ass ass. I ain't even gonna cap with you. But I started I started crafting shit, and sort of found my own wave, found my own sound, and now uh, now we here. I ain't got a lot of. I ain't got a lot of fans. But I don't need a lot of fans. It ain't never about the fans. It's about the, it's about the craft. Once I get fans, it's gonna be all about the fans. But until then, I'm just gonna be making music to make music, dog. Yeah, man, that's 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 awesome. Hey, look, all the greatest inventors have the most humblest beginnings, and we're right here at the beginning. So it's an honor. Um. Yeah, but like I, I relate heavily to that because like Loki, um, I don't want to give my whole life story on here. This is your interview, but like I, mm -hmm. I live in like rural Northern Virginia, and like there's not a lot Ooh. of shit out here, and there's not a place for young people to be like young people. A lot of the people that are catered to is you know older people, and I feel like even right now in in what people consider the mainstream in music it's it's similar it's it's almost like older millennials are, are the most mm. targeted demographic and then you have like the old school people but then after that it becomes you know there's like pop you know also at the top but because that's mm. like for everybody but then at the bottom is where we find like the you know the underground rappers you know, people who, who, who are really grassroots, you know, and that's that's why I'm like catering to this crowd myself. Nah, for sure. I feel you on that. So do you like Kansas? <laughs> I don't know, man. There's, there's some aspects to Kansas that I really like and I really enjoy. Like the views here is beautiful because uh, I don't know if you ever heard, uh, Kansas is flat flatter than a flatter than a fake bitch ass Damn. like we be like it's nice i ain't even gonna lie but like motherfucking motherfuckers need out of here because the way that the way that most motherfuckers be living in kansas is just hey we finna be here and then we finna be here because our parents was here and then they just don't ever get out of that mindset. We here because our parents are here. And so I want my kids to live here. But you got to move out of your hometown. Like, like you cannot, you, like you cannot just stay in one place forever unless that one place has different options. And Kansas just doesn't. Like, Kansas is all like wheat and corn and farming and shit. Like, as I said before, the only really good thing to come out of Kansas is like, couple rappers tech nine like there's only so much that can really be done in kansas that's why that's why me and my homeboy like as soon as we out of our fucking cases and shit we finna be moving straight just straight moving me and my collective we not finna stay together but 
you know, we got a we got a bond where we don't exactly have to stay together. You know, it can be it can be I'm working from Colorado, my homeboy working from Memphis, and we can still be like making heat. Mm. Yeah, that's 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 powerful right there because a lot of a lot of people are making similar moves, and they don't even have to meet each other in person. It's like online, you know. Like there's a there's a uh, a lot of collectives, and they they they'll meet like over Xbox, right? And they'll make that yeah. collective, but they'll each one of the people in the collective will put in the work, and around them, pardon my dog, will like. You can. Um. Their in, their sphere of influence around each member ends up creating, mm-hmm. and and that internet factor ends up you know creating a whole um, sphere. You know what I'm saying? The whole little aesthetic. That's what I'm trying to say. Yup, right there. Yeah. It, it's like it's like my homeboy. Uh, my homeboy Dunes. He he don't even know that I'm about to fucking name drop him in this shit. But my homeboy Dunes. Uh, we linked up on a remix of one of my songs a while back because I just hit him up like, "Hey man, I got this open. Like, I know this ain't your sound, but I want to see you. I want to see you on some shit like this." He was like, "Damn, I I'll do that shit." Motherfucker, he hopped. I, I ain't even met him. I don't even know where he lived. But that motherfucker, he he hopped on that remix. He just straight just the sound and everything that he does and how he's crafting that shit. That's just he. And I got to work with him just because I hit him up one day like, hey man, if you ever need some beats, I'm the guy. I got I, I got that like, I got that hard like gritty electronic sound that sometimes, uh, the, the, it's not electronic, but like it's the, it's the trippy and the like yeet beats that motherfuckers like be wanting, be needing. Mm-hmm. That's- and I'd be, and I was like, hey man, if you ever need some beats, just hit me up. And then I hit him up like, hey, man, I want to hear you on this open. He was like, lit, I'll hop on this shit. And then we crafted that shit all without all without meeting each other. And that shit, it, it, it just, it just feels good knowing that I got that, I, I got that ability to just hit someone up. Be like, hey, man, link up with me type shit. Yeah, yeah, like the... The, I always say like this is so corny what I'm about to say but like to me music is the closest thing to magic so when I'm mm-hmm. when I get to link with somebody it's 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 super real it's like number one it's like damn so you're taking your skill set I'm taking my skill set we get the link in this finished product is something that we can both consume and share with everybody. Cause like you can listen to a song an infinite amount of times and shit, and it's always mm-hmm. gonna give you that feeling that you had from when you first heard it. You know what I'm saying? Like you you hear yeah some like when you make a timeless record or just some shit that's really quality or whatever. It's like yeah you always gonna come back to that and be like yep that's that one that I did with blah blah blah. And that's why I call it magic because it makes you feel something. Mm-hmm. And it's it was made somewhere completely different. Yeah, no, nah, for real. So, I, 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 it, man, if agreeing with you makes me corny, then shit, I'm a motherfucking cornball to the death. Like, um, like, I, like, e- e- even outside of that shit, I am a cornball to the death. I ain't even gonna lie, but <laughs> who cares, bro? It's, it's all about being yourself. You know what I'm saying? That as fuck bro how you think macklemore made it to the top and won that fucking grammy bro he's corny but he doesn't give a shit like exactly <laughs> that's not that's not me saying i'm a macklemore fan but shit he made a that's way. a grind bro he made a he way. did um so shit well you mentioned it earlier with like tech nine but what are some of your influences and inspirations oh bro Oh, bro, I got so many. When it when it comes to like sounds that I'm not exactly trying to mimic, just rather sounds in general. I be fucking with like like Detroit and Flint. Detroit rap and Flint rap have definitely like brought up a brought an upbringing to my sound. 
um i always i always got some heavy ass 808s shout out to like producers like wendigo and cubensis i ain't gonna i ain't gonna say uh i'll just say main head of spider gang because i don't want to i don't want to be using his name and shit because that's awkward <laughs> it, it, but like spider gang is definitely uh someone that i can attribute most of my like sound to because i got uh, I, like i'll send you some beats afterwards it's some fucking like heavy ass 808s it's like it's just a lot of my sounds just attributed to 2016 uh soundcloud and like detroit pretty much that's a long story short yeah bro i really fuck with detroit beach like i i want to find a way myself to incorporate that that groove like it's like a very up and down in your face but also like smooth as hell about it you know what i'm saying when when them when them drums hit and it's just so like mm -hmm. the it's the perfect mix so i really i, I really try and find a way to in, incorporate that with my fucking uh beats or whatever but you know you you um that's that's tough though do you ever think that the 2016 like soundcloud like do you think that'll ever come back like we'll ever have something that'll match that on soundcloud Shit, if you want my opinion, I feel like we already uh kind of, we're already reaching a reaching our sort of like 2016 SoundCloud era, if that makes sense. With like with like yeeting all them, like the way that they run uh, the way that they riding up to the top is fucking crazy. Yeet dropping his EP and being met with such like positive reception and shit, that shit was fucking crazy. I think that while we while we won't have something to the level of what 2016 was we will definitely be we will definitely be getting our own like taste of that shit you know yeah like like it's it's not gonna be anywhere as heavy as like fucking 2016 was we are we are never gonna have like another x or another juice but just because we ain't gonna have another X or another juice doesn't mean that we can't like doesn't mean that we're not gonna have our own kind of era, you know? Yeah, bro, that's that's a very insightful right there. Yeah. I actually I I agree hundred percent. Mm hmm I feel like right now there's there's so many different types of waves going on right now that are I feel like plug and B and like that whole rage, hyper pop and stuff, well, not as much hyper pop, mm -hmm. but like with Yeet and Autumn and Summers and stuff, I feel like they're they're almost like too hot to consider underground anymore. Like they're not they're not A list celebrities yet, but there's like yeah. they're 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 above, you know, what what I consider underground because they to me like they made it and they're they're Number one, they're breaking boundaries with a, uh, with a new sound. Number two, it's like, now they don't gotta lie about how much money they got in their songs. They they really can they really can do something. You know, they, they these are- For sure. They're, put, they're pushing, you know what I'm saying? Um, 100%. And people, people, and this is the main thing, is that once you reach a certain point where people are trying to be like you, I feel like that's one of the biggest milestones you can ever have, bro. Oh, for sure, like it, like that exactly like the moment i start seeing like moonrise type beats bro i made it like 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 i have a lot of i made it moments but like that shit right there when i start seeing me type beats and i click on one and that shit sound accurate mm, mm, it's the best feeling because some motherfuckers can say that they got a u type beat but they don't really got a u type beat mm-hmm it's like a, it, it's like motherfuckers saying it's a plug beat, but like Cardi would have rapped on that four years ago. Like label your beats correctly, dog. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Um, so you know, with 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 making it, say mm -hmm. you make it real, real, really, really big. What's the message that you're gonna have for your audience and for the world? Man. I'm finna be I'm finna be corny about it and steal the oh shit this motherfucker in my squad. Uh but 
the main message and this is going to be like copy paste what uh kenny beat says don't overthink shit like like it's kenny's message but i've applied it to everything that i've done do not overthink shit because the moment that you overthink and you start letting like how other motherfuckers are gonna feel into the way that you make your music and the way that you craft your shit that is when you basically like giving up like I, and that doesn't mean like don't take what motherfuckers say into account because sometimes you got to but at the same time it's more like it's more like if you crafting something by yourself but still depend on everybody else's opinions and what someone else has to say even with that unsolicited advice that they put in like you've given up yeah bro you get it you get it i feel like me to expand on what you said like i feel like a lot of the best shit that i've ever done personally was done on accident there's always been like this one factor in a beat or like a song that I did on accident, but they're like, it sounds nice. I'm like, so boom, I'm gonna just run with it. And, it, and it's mm. something unique, like, because it's like an accident. Or, but, and it's, and it's also like, if you look like you're trying too hard, you probably are trying too hard. And people don't wanna like, really gravitate towards that, you know? So if you're always overthinking, nine times out of 10, you're stressed out. And people don't like being around a stressed out person. You know what I'm saying? No, for real. That's that's dope. Don't overthink shit. That's awesome. D O T S or dots. Shout out to Kenny Beats, man. Like like you you were bringing up inspirations earlier. Kenny Beats is also up there. Like I would not be where I am with like my beat making and shit if I wasn't in like like Kenny's Discord, bro. I'm like if you're not in that, I'm gonna need to send you an invite to that so you can get like a more of a idea on like where i get like a lot of my mindset from because motherfucker i'll be chilling in they vcs for like two three hours they got a studio vc where motherfuckers will sit in there and just make beats they do nothing but make beats and, and like obviously like the way that i said that makes it sound bad but it ain't Cause you can you can really learn a lot from motherfuckers. Some motherfuckers some motherfuckers can sit there, be making the most ass beat, and you can ask like you can ask like their opinions. They got some motherfucking shit to say. Always got some motherfucking shit to say. Oh yeah. Hey, like to me, to me, like bro, I I really need to start joining more discords like that. <laughs> I'm not really a lot of like a part of them. I'm a part of a few, but like. They're not really mm -hmm. active. Like, I don't, you, do, uh, do you know about like the tenor ghosts? It's like with Dead Boy Aiden in them. They make like YouTube video mm. tutorials. Nah, I, uh, I don't, no, nah, I, I don't know the, I ain't know them. Well, like, I don't know. Like, if I click this shit, all people do is really just promote their music in there. And like, I don't know. I've been in a lot of discords and group chats where, where that happens, where it's like, People are like, oh yeah, we're gonna do a collective. And then people just start putting their own beats and shit in like their song, but nobody's really like working together. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's just trying to- Yeah. Every, everyone's, everyone's sitting in there just being like, like, comment, and share, sending their own posts and shit. Yeah, like, bro, come on. Yeah. Um, no, I know that. But actually, that's actually a great thing that you said though, like, this is this is not said enough, but like, and I'm glad you said it. The when you're in those discords and shit like that, though, it's like mm -hmm. you may become an acquaintance or a friend with somebody in that call, and it's like you guys can have healthy competition back and forth and learn from each other, even though you guys have completely different producing styles. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, like. Be best thing about Kenny server that shit ain't never dead. That shit ain't ever dead. I I, I straight up, I was on. I, I hopped on a call at midnight, bro. For most of them, it was like 10, 11. I hopped on it midnight my time. We was on a call for like three hours, just straight chopping it up, talking about beasts, talking about how we do shit, like 
And as I said, there could be some motherfuckers in there like making straight ass beats. But no matter what, it's a community of it, it's a community of peace. It's a community where like everyone's sitting talking, like g giving tips on how to make the beat sound better. Like like man, those hi hats hitting too hard need to need to add an EQ there type shit. Yeah. And, and like of course we have we have the fair share of some motherfuckers who just walk in on some other shit but even when they walk in on other shit like we know how to handle it we've dealt with it before that server's been around for like two years now mods are mods have gotten way better from how they previously was so it's like it's it, it's nice it's so it, it, it's always nice walking up in that bitch yeah i'm gonna have to join so tough that's okay i can knock and i'll segue to this question so you mentioned when people come in on some other shit and like you know like people think they may be better than somebody and be like real you know real dick about it you know what i'm saying so let me ask this how do you feel mm. about the underground right now as a community and the whole atmosphere of it I think that there's some uh, good shit that's being done in terms of like making steps towards some new shit. Cause for a while there, everyone was just trying to be like everyone else. And to an extent, there's still that everyone's wanting to be like everyone else and do that shit. But we still have, uh, like we still have those motherfuckers making those steps and shit. Like, like, uh, I don't know exactly how to say his name, but I think it's like Izzy and shit. When he made the fucking uh, green tip five five six and a blink two, that shit was heat. Right. And and like like you could hear his inspiration, but he was definitely adding his own flows and his own sound to that shit. Cause like I can name it, I, like I can name his inspiration off the bat for that song. But that doesn't make it a bad song. It just shows that motherfuckers are finally at the point where they're taking inspiration and not trying to be like someone else because for a while they're like the plug in me scene was just straight motherfuckers trying to rap like summers and trying to rap like che romani and trying to rap like like i fucks with it but at the same time it's like you're not gonna get far if you if you just copying motherfuckers who ain't even like made it up there yet and now we at a point where like summers and and fucking iaz are like getting more into the mainstream and motherfuckers aren't copying that they're just at they're, they're taking their own spin to it long story short i fucks with the underground scene right now and i i, I fucks with what everyone be doing it's pretty good right there it's pretty good response well developed well developed yeah i feel like you know when it when it as an artist, a goal of, you know, like, check me out. I, I don't know if you see this on TikTok, but like a lot of people are like low-key going ham with flipping. I made this new genre. It's called drill plug or, or I made this new genre. It's called mm. uh, educational plug or, or whatever, right? Yeah. Our, uh, our new core is dropped like every week. And I, I think it's, it's, it's great that people are trying to do their own thing and, uh, you know, evolve the, whatever they're doing forward, you know, because mm -hmm. it's a great thing to be original and originality is so rare to come by these days as well. So like, but how do you feel about that? Like, do you feel like one day people are, or it's going to be coming out at such a rate that it's even the new so-called genres are going to be oversaturated like i hate to i hate to be that guy but we already at that point mm -hmm. like it like it's i've seen so many motherfuckers do exactly what you talk about like i made a new genre but it sounds like shit that like insert artist here made two years ago like like at, like at some point you gotta take a look back and it doesn't always have to be about being a genre bending artist like i know some genre bending artists who are like really like bending shit like i hate to be that guy 
when hyper pop came around bro and i'm finna i'm finna get like a little cringe with it when 100 gex came out with a studio album the 1000 gex where they're standing up at the tree and shit Mm-hmm. When they came out with that shit, that is bending a genre. That like hyper pop is taking like aspects of a certain genre and just like breaking it down to its bare essentials, and then taking those bare essentials and putting them up like tenfold. Like, like uh oh shit, what's their name? Quinn, OS Quinn. Oh, uh, dude, I love him yeah like quinn was on some shit quinn quinn made like quinn made hyper pop finally split off from just being hyper pop and getting into shit like digicore you know and digicore uh, like like just the name digicore opened up for that sound to finally expand like uh like xix Mm -hmm. i was I i was on that xix chain like before they even blew up with like uh kismet that shit those motherfuckers is those motherfuckers is the one that's legitimately like bending genres right. not 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 these motherfuckers out here like i mixed rage and the squeaks from your mother's bed like <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo. <laughs> like like Bam Man Real, he would. I, I will always fucks with Bam Man, cause like he took Jersey Club and turned it into his own shit. Mm-hmm. Like rapping on Jersey Club beats, that's been around, but not with the not with the style that Bam Man hit it with, and that shit was crazy. Like, like I I I completely understand when an artist wants to hit the whole. I've uh I've made a new genre thing, but like sometimes you gotta check the artist and be like, well, you didn't. Like period. That's about the opinions I've got on that shit. That was that was also very well developed. That was that was awesome. Um again, like I gotta think, I gotta take that in. Mm. You good. I think a lot of these people like I feel like this is that process this is a process that also kind of has to happen where like the people who start off as worse vert there's going to I've noticed this a lot in underground there'll be a lot of people who will catch on to an idea and they'll all have like a different you know interpretation of it and then Mm -hmm. people will like they're they're almost like fighting to see who will blow up first with this like sound that they have right because like yeah. no one wants to be a worse version of another artist you know what i'm saying like no, no for sure be, like a, a worse yeet you know you're gonna get clowned forever for that so no nah, yeah yeah that was pretty insightful about what you said so i'm gonna move on to a next question um Bet. What are your top five or top ten like artists of all time? Ooh, damn! Top ten artists of all time. I don't want to be that guy, but Kanye gotta be on there. <laughs> like, like Kanye definitely on the list. Uh, Jib for sure. Um, Baby Tron. I, I I also hate to be that guy, but Baby Tron on top. Like Baby Tron really finna take over this shit yeah um i i think honestly i could say the entirety of shitty boys but uh baby Tron about the only uh, baby Tron about the biggest one out of them right now um shit uh outside outside of like rappers like tame impala like I, I I I gotta I gotta be I, I gotta be true to the fact that I was an indie kid before I was a before I was a rapper, and like like Calpurnia, that's a that's an indie band. The head of that band is Finn Wolfhard, I think. Mm-hmm. They hard as fuck. 
obviously not like hard in like the the rap sense but like in terms of music and shit it's always some shit that i can vibe to it's always some shit that sounds nice um damn shit really making me realize that i do not listen to much outside of rap hey yo, Fuck. i i don't i hardly ever like listen to like music now like because i make my own and i'm always trying to like learn new shit like i don't listen to music in the same way that i used to nah for real uh you know what i'm I, i'm gonna I'm a hit it with some fucking midwest emo shit and say shit like uh shit like american football and uh mom jeans is always good and then i have to say cyber bully mom club is also on top of that list because as i said before i was a before i was a rapper i was definitely into indie shit and i'm gonna be like later in later in my career i'm definitely gonna be sampling like shit shit like midwest emo shit like that uh, like the midwest emo sound has uh grown just like the just like the fucking just like i feel the underground has in terms of like now motherfuckers ain't depending on this that and the other they just making their own shit they making what they want to make like i know some dudes uh like a couple towns over they got this band um apartment to be got a shout out my homies always pushing p um but like apartment to be they're this indie band out of emporia and they great like like it's, it's good to see like actual bands starting instead of just me doing what i do with like rap all the time you know right. yeah. like finally seeing finally seeing motherfuckers like grow as artists and shit is amazing and, and i can i can always give props to like artists artists that like aren't doing what i'm doing I, I always feel like that's the most important thing and definitely like a thing that some uh artists in the new age just sort of skip over is that like there are always some like there's always gonna be artists not doing what you do and whether that whether that's in the genre that you're in or not you always like you always gotta give props like you gotta give props for props is due yeah so before before i started taking like rap music so seriously I was really into uh, saxophone, right? I, I was a I was a saxophone player in school, and I'm mm. pretty good. I was I was pretty good. Um, where I'm at, the uh, that instrument is pretty competitive when you audition for shit. Oh God, yeah, I, I know that too. I used to play alto sax. And one thing that I learned is that flipping, there's always going to be somebody out there they may not have the clout or recognition that you do but there's always going to be somebody out there better than you or working harder than you and there's always going to be somebody worse than you and then there's always going to be somebody doing some shit completely different but they're mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and it's important no, to yeah. understand where you lie between those aspects and you know where to give props so like i totally understand what you're saying pretty much that's what mm -hmm. i'm saying yeah i feel you i feel you um that's tough man so um, i'm gonna ask you man so say you're that guy you're that guy who's working out like outworking everybody else you know what are you gonna mm -hmm. do when you get that first big check shit i ain't even gonna lie that shit going straight to my mom's mm -hmm. or not just to my mom's but straight to my family like the one thing that i've always like looked forward to forward to as an artist is giving back to the people who like gave to me in the first place like i wouldn't i wouldn't be anywhere if like a couple christmases uh, like five to seven christmases back i didn't get that computer like like my mom has literally always been there for me even even when i'm in this sufferable shit my mom has always been there for me so i like i want to move my family out this place I, I, I want to get to a point with my like money with my checks that my family ain't got to worry about like what's gonna come next or how everything's gonna go down 
like i want i want to get everyone to like be able to live comfortably even if it means for like a couple like years with my checks i ain't gonna live comfortably i i, I just it's all about giving back dog yeah man i agree 100 percent. it's i feel like in this era of like the whole world bro especially if you're young financial freedom is a goal that everybody has because it's like like money is power right and it's like but in the at the end of the day people just want to be free period so period. you know if you the whole goal too i feel like this is universal among a lot of artists is that if you can make a living off of what you love to do expressing yourself getting out a pot is a positive message or whatever it's like that's worth something you know that's worth more than money and then now that you're making money and you're able to give it back to the people who gave you the tools to do that in the first place like your mother like you know your mm -hmm. loved ones and all that shit. that's that's like a one in a million feeling so i bro that goal is noble it's pretty dope mm -hmm. thanks dog um let's see bro one more question a couple more questions so bet, on the bet. flip side what are you gonna do mm -hmm. if rap doesn't work out I'm making beats man if this shit don't work out i'm still finna do it mm. I, like 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 as i as i said before my whole goal in life is to make music and i've been wanting that since a child like since it's like I, I was in sunday school when i was like like 10 like 10 to 10 to 14 i used to go to sunday school and i'd be there like I, i'd be on the piano that they had there with my limited limited I, and when i say limited i mean extremely limited knowledge of music and shit is sitting there on the pianos singing so like it, like if rap don't work out and beats don't work out that ain't gonna stop me I do I do this shit simply because I want to do this shit and if I and if I if I'm like not as famous but every now and again you see proud moonrise on a beat or on a song shit still I made it like like mu music isn't only a uh, a dream but an escape for me if I'm feeling angry, all I need to do is produce a angry ass no melody beat. If I'm sad, then I can put I can whip up some like R and B like Drake shit. It's it, it like it's all about like I guess it's all about like the craft, you know? Yeah, I agree one hundred percent. You know, I always said that like myself that um fucking I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a either be like homeless making beats or off in the woods somewhere making beats doing like like fuck yeah. I'm like I'm not I'm not going to give in bro cuz I feel like when this is this is important I'm going to ask you a question and how you feel about this I when it comes to people chasing dreams and doing what they want I feel like a lot of people feel like they have to sacrifice a lot of what that is when they have to so-called grow up and be an adult like whatever that means like you see a lot of adults lose that magic and that 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 enchantment that they have that not necessarily when they were a child but the aspirations that they had when they were just younger you know what i'm saying they mm -hmm. believe in themselves even if it didn't even make sense or if it wasn't thought out like they just they had something to believe in just because like they wanted to do something you know what i'm saying i feel like when people grow up and they get a job you know or that nine to five like or whatever that means it's like people lose that you know what i'm saying no for sure i agree with that 100 percent. yeah um and that's why i feel like today like people are afraid of that that nine to five whole trope you know what i'm saying Oh yeah, motherfuckers, motherfuckers don't want to be like stuck in nine to fives, and I completely understand that. I mean, shit, I work at McDonald's, bro. 
<laughs> like like if anyone understands the whole nine to five shit i understand working like nine to fives and shit my dad understands working nine to fives and shit but i don't want to i don't want my dad to watch this and think that i'm shit talking him but i just i, I don't want to be like my dad i don't want to lose that i, I don't want to be at a point where i feel like I've, I've lost my dreams and lost what i wanted to do because that's just that's just not life at that point you know yeah i know exactly what you mean when you say that because i used to work at taco bell <laughs> and uh oh. bro i i got hired part-time but like people were part-time working full-time hours yes yes bro yeah that was so dumb i was and then my gr and then like i told him i was in school and all this stuff and like I, i'm gonna still try and come through and work like because i want money and i i like the people who i'm working with that wasn't a problem but then like the the leadership and the manage and the manager started to change, and then mm -hmm. I was good at what I do. I was I was really good at drive through, like in low key. Like that's low key why I'm doing interviews now because I just enjoy talking to people. I guess and like a lot of that those skills that are here carried over to there, and it's like so they would just always sure. put me on the shift. I was like work like I like you said full time hours and shit, and it's like. Mm -hmm with the whole dad thing i don't want him to hear this neither but it's just like and this is no diss to him but it's like i understand you gotta make sacrifices to work and get what you want all good things come with a you know a great sacrifice so but i don't believe in the future that people should have to be working in the way that they are now because like a lot yeah. of jobs and shit you don't see the fruit of your labor you know what i'm saying it's not like how people mm -hmm. back in the day like i don't know how your grandparents were but like your grandparents used to farm but they would get like a portion of that food that they were farming with and now they can feed themselves with it you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. you get it back and then nowadays, yeah it's just like with the whole office scene or working at mcdonald's like sure you get money but it's what are you working for like where is the actual labor and work going towards you know what i'm saying exactly you put you put in so much in just for just for what like like and, and that's that's why i like that's why i treat mcdonald's as like my side job you know like rapping rapping and beat making is like that's my main job in my own eyes and mcdonald's like a side job because there's always other jobs Motherfucker, mo most fast food places is always hiring, and if they don't, they just don't like you. That that like that that's the truest secret that I've been told uh, about like like jobs and shit is that if a motherfucking place doesn't hire, if a motherfucking place has a now hiring sign, but they hit you with the, well, we just don't think you'd be a good fit. Change your personality up, and you will get a job. Cause nine times out of ten, them places is always hiring. Whether they say they hiring or not, like you just gotta walk into a place and be like, "Hey, y'all motherfuckers got like y'all motherfuckers need a worker." And like nine times out of ten, they will overwork your ass. Yep. Hate to say it, nine times out of ten, they gon' overwork your ass. But regardless, you you can just, like regardless, you gotta treat that shit like it ain't your main job. Cause nine times out of ten, it ain't gonna be your main job unless you a manager. They not gonna care about you, and, unless you in that management position. And even then, once you reach that management position, your employees gonna like your employees not gonna like you. It's it, it's the worst part about doing shit like that. Is is like. It's like you gotta you gotta be your own man you gotta be your own person you gotta do what you can for you and not work for everybody else yup yup that's powerful right there that's that's low key like i feel like everybody has that what what we're talking about right now this this sentiment tucked mm -hmm. in them you know what i'm saying like, oh yeah this is the change that people really want to see you know what i'm saying for sure. Let's see. Well, I think that's all the really good questions I have. I got one more. One more. If you could have three superpowers, what are they? Mm, mm. Three superpowers? Like all at once or just like 
just three superpowers in general. Like, yeah, I guess three superpowers in general that you can just have. Period. Yeah. I. Motherfuckers always say invisibility. Invisibility ain't always cracked up to be. I say teleportation is the shit. Uh, so that's definitely up on the uh, up on the top of the list. Shape shifting. I could do so much if I was a shape shifter, bro. You you know how viral I'd be. Oh yeah. Yup. I could get I, I could get bitches just by making my jawline a bit sharper. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like I take that shit. And then shit for the third one. Super strength, bro. I'm tired of my body being like this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this. Well, like, for sure, I'm gonna be hopping into the gym, but like. Like super speed, unless you like the flash and have certain ways around it, that's just gonna be ass, dog. Like all the wind in your face and shit, that's just gonna be ass. You need you need you some like you need you super strength so that you can just be like, hey, dog, you wanna hit the you wanna hit the gym with me? Well, shit, I can't do gym work here. I'll just pick up your car. That'll be my exercise. I'll take you to the gym, type shit. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> facts. Yeah, shape shifting is overpowered and hardly. Well, I don't know. I haven't asked enough people this question, but hard people hardly ever say that. That's the first one I say, cause it's like, mm -hmm. fuck being invisible. I could be anybody I want to be. So like, I could come yes. one day, and then I'm a different person the next. Like no one would ever know. <laughs> like, nah, for sure, for sure. I feel you on that one. <laughs> nah, I for sure feel you on that one. Um, but yeah, man, um, shit, well, unless there's anything else special, any shout outs you want to give out, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up, bro. Shit, I got, I, I got a, I got a couple things to say. Uh, first off, <laughs> you bitch in the clip, you can't knock it. Uh, first off, shout out to my boys, Savage Sound. Uh, we a small ass collective, as I said, out of Kansas. Uh, we be doing our own shit. We be making our own waves. We had to open it. We open for some motherfuckers. Uh, uh, if you look up a second thing, if you look up my music, nothing I have made is the same. I have four songs currently out. Nothing I've made is the same. And um, I got some new shit coming out. Me and my homies got an EP under our Savage Sound name. You can look us up on SoundCloud. We can't put that. We can't put that EP on Spotify because uh, most people be saying ours. And uh, thirdly, don't give up. Like shit, shit's going to look rough, and you can like take a look at me, dog. I got two, three, fucking like pending cases. Shit's gonna be rough, but shit is not always gonna look like this. You're not finna, you're not finna be in this same spot forever. Shit's going to change. And if you're one of those people that doesn't like change, get over it. <laughs> like I hate to, I hate to say that kind of shit. You just gotta, you just gotta, you just gotta make the jump. You gotta, you gotta jump off the porch. You gotta do that shit. And uh, yeah, I've been moonrise. So, it was good talking to you, man. Yeah, absolutely, man. You, you said a lot of insightful stuff. Uh, this is one of the better interviews I've done. So, again, thank you for your time. Thank you for reaching out and stuff. Uh, of this course, This has dog. been Soldy, Saintly Silas, a.k.a. Silas X. You know me, the Soldy man. Another day, another dollar. Another interview, another scholar. Yeah, bro, I'm dropping bars. Listen, man, I hope you enjoyed this. A lot of insightful things were said, and I hope y'all can relate to his message and the Soldy message. So, you know, if you want your own, hit me up in the DM, you know. But in the future, you know, we're going to have to book it. We'll talk it over, whatever. But listen, if you want to know about your boy, link in the description. It's been Saintly Silas, Silas X. I can't even say my own name right, and I'm off.